Donald Trump is set to sign an executive order that would substantially curtail freedom of speech potentially, and this is being done under the guise of protecting people from hatred and bigotry, which I know is ironic coming from Donald Trump, but nonetheless, here we are. So what is this about? This is about Israel and Palestinian human rights and individuals who choose to stand up for Palestinians on college campuses. So as Peter Baker and Maggie Haberman of the New York Times report, President Trump plans to sign an executive order on Wednesday targeting what he sees as anti-Semitism on college campuses by threatening to withhold federal money from educational institutions that fail to combat discrimination, three administration officials said on Tuesday. The order will effectively interpret Judaism as a race or nationality, not just a religion, to prompt a federal law penalizing colleges and universities deemed to be shirking their responsibility to foster an open climate for minority students. In recent years, the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, or BDS, movement against Israel has roiled some campuses, leaving some Jewish students feeling unwelcome or attacked. In signing the order, Mr. Trump will use his executive power to take action where Congress has not, essentially replicating bipartisan legislation that has stalled on Capitol Hill for several years. Prominent Democrats have joined Republicans in promoting such a policy change to combat anti-Semitism as well as the Boycott Israel movement, but critics complained that such a policy could be used to stifle free speech and legitimate opposition to Israel's policies toward Palestinians in the name of fighting anti-Semitism. The definition of anti-Semitism to be used in the order matches the one used by the State Department and by dozens of other nations, but it has been criticized as too open-ended and sweeping. For instance, it describes as anti-Semitic denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination and offers as an example of such behavior, claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. Yusuf Manayer, the executive director of the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights, said Mr. Trump was trying to silence Palestinian rights activism by equal equating opposition to Israeli treatment of Palestinians with anti-Semitism. So this is a literal free speech issue where the federal government is penalizing individuals who choose to engage in a particular political activity that they don't like, that they disapprove of. And he's doing this in a very disingenuous way by trying to conflate advocacy for Palestinian human rights and criticism of Israel with all anti-Semitism. What he fails to realize, or does realize but doesn't care, is that criticisms of Israel are disaggregated from anti-Semitism. When people call for Palestinian human rights to be respected, they're not criticizing Jewish people. They're criticizing the government's actions in the state of Israel. Two very different things. But since the issue itself is nuanced, this allows people like Donald Trump to obfuscate and curtail freedom of speech because he has a political agenda. And it's disgusting. And for all the right-wingers who criticize Democrats for weaponizing identity politics, um, this is the weaponization of identity politics. But they're doing it to hurt marginalized people, namely Palestinians. Now, what Donald Trump is saying as to why he's signing this now is because he has no choice. Basically, he's compelled to sign this executive order because Congress refuses to take action. But ask yourself this. Is action really necessary given that 27 states have already adopted anti-BDS legislation? I mean, is the issue really that urgent? And on top of that, 14 states are considering similar legislation and the impact that this has had on free speech has already been chilling, but Donald Trump wants to go even further. So let me remind you, if you don't already know, a Texas school teacher was fired for refusing to sign a pro-Israel loyalty pledge and yes, this is in America, not Israel. A Texas city refused to give aid to victims of Hurricane Harvey unless they pledged to not boycott Israel. And multiple federal courts have already blocked these types of anti-BDS laws because they're unconstitutional, pretty brazenly so. But regardless, they're still being adopted by other states in spite of how unconstitutional they are. Now, even large companies are trying to silence their employees that speak out on behalf of Palestinian human rights. Just last year, CNN fired Mark Lamont Hill for speaking out in favor of Palestinians. So this is a threat to free speech. So if you hear anyone talking about how much they care about free speech and they're using SJWs on college campuses 
as the threat, but not talking about this. People like Dave Rubin and Tim Pool understand that they are revealing their true colors. They don't actually care about real threats to the First Amendment. The government imposing what you can or can't say on you. It is absolutely not just unconstitutional, but it's morally repugnant. Because people who support BDS, they're doing so for altruistic reasons. Because there's no other way to get Israel to stop their illegal occupation of Palestine. So they're using a tactic that ended apartheid in South Africa with hopes that that will put pressure on the Israeli government, not Jewish people, but the Israeli government, and end, you know, the apartheid that's going on in Israel currently. But regardless, it doesn't matter what the context is. Regardless of nuance, if you speak out against Israel, you will be deemed anti-Semitic according to Donald Trump here and the State Department's definition of anti-Semitism. Now, that's not to say that anti-Semitism isn't a threat because there has been an increase of anti-Semitism, and this is something that should worry everyone, right? But Donald Trump is targeting the wrong people here. If you're truly concerned with anti-Semitism, what we need to do is target these far-right groups, the fascists who are increasingly, you know, gaining more influence in the United States and other European countries. That's where the anti-Semitism is coming from. It's not coming from pro-peace activists, because a lot of people who stand up for Palestinian human rights are Jewish citizens, or they are in the state of Israel. So it's preposterous to say that any and all criticisms of Israel is tantamount to anti-Semitism, because if you apply that standard to any other country, I mean, think of the implications. So if you say that any and all criticism of the Saudi government and their various human rights abuses is tantamount to Islamophobia, well then, we can't speak out about their human rights violations and how they literally execute LGBTQ people? Or, if we say that any and all criticism of the Chinese government is tantamount to racism, I guess we can't speak out on behalf of all the protesters in Hong Kong who are fighting for democracy and demanding democracy. Do you understand why this is a slippery slope in a way? And I get that slippery slope is a logical fallacy, but when it comes to the precedent that our government sets, really a slippery slope is something that you can't argue because once we start doing this, then understand that when we start questioning, you know, the weapons deals that we continue to sell to Saudi Arabia, well, if the government doesn't like that we're speaking out against that, then they can say, well, if you criticize Saudi Arabia, then you're Islamophobic and you hate Arabs. Like, this is a dangerous, dangerous way to frame political discourse. Like, if we disagree with the actions of our government and another government abroad, we should be able to vocalize our concerns without the fear that there will be repercussions for our actions. That's the crux of free speech. That's what the First Amendment was created for. But here we see Donald Trump brazenly violating the First Amendment of the Constitution, and probably not very many people will pay attention, including mainstream media outlets like CNN, who have fired their own employees for speaking out on behalf of Palestinians. So overall, I don't expect this to get much traction in mainstream media, but nonetheless, we still have to talk about this because this is absolutely dangerous. We're already losing civil liberties and civil rights in this country. You know, we already have the government spying on us. We're uh, doing torture. So we've already eroded the Fourth and Eighth Amendments to our Constitution. Let's not allow the First Amendment to also be, you know, taken away from us with absolutely no fight. Let's actually push back and fight for what's right because those who are on the side of BDS... They're taking the right stand, just as people who were against apartheid in South Africa were taking the right stand and had the right strategy to put pressure on a government who was oppressing its people. I just hope that people speak out, you know, on this issue if they truly care about free speech. But I suspect individuals like Dave Rubin will remain silent because, you know, they only talk about free speech when it benefits them. They don't want to talk about it if it runs counter to their anti-SJW narrative. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.